Hello there. In this video we're going to be talking about a special type of numbers known as Ulam numbers. So the first two Ulam numbers are going to be uh, U1 is equal to 1 and U2 is equal to 2. And then the description of how you generate the rest of the Ulam numbers is a bit more intricate. But we're going to talk about um, how it's defined and we're going to work through a few examples on how to calculate Ulam numbers. Alright, so I have here written down how the other Ulam numbers are defined. So let's sort of work through this definition. So UN for N greater than, should be greater than 2, is going to be the smallest integer that is the sum of two distinct earlier Ulam numbers. So the third Ulam number must be a sum of previous Ulam numbers. So U50 has to be the sum of two different Ulam numbers, like U31 and U18 or something like that. But in order to make this uh, unique, th these two Ulam numbers have to be different. So two earlier Ulam numbers. So that's the first uh, requirement. And only one way. So if you have, say, uh, 4 plus 2 and 5 plus 1, that is two different ways of obtaining 6. So that won't count. And we're not going to count commutatives. So 5 plus 2 and 2 plus 5 is going to count as the same exact thing. And it has to be larger than all our previous Ulam numbers. Therefore, the Ulam number sequence must be a increasing sequence uh, by definition. So let's see if we can generate the third Ulam number. So we have U1 is equal to 1 and U2 is equal to 2. So the only possible sums here is the sum of this one and that one. So 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 is the only possible sum that can be generated from these two Ulam numbers. Uh, and again, we have to do distinct earlier numbers, so we can't do 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 2. Right? So that means by default, uh, u3 is going to be equal to 3. Alright, so let's look at what we have here. So u1 is 1, u2 is 2, u3 is equal to 3. So let's see what u4 is. So what are the possible sums? So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. And 2 plus 3 is going to be equal to 5. So we can't have 3 um, because we already have 3 as an Ulam number. Um, and 4 is the next number um, that is greater than all the other Ulam numbers. So therefore this is going to be our next Ulam number. So U4 is going to be equal to 4. Alright, so we have u1 is 1, u2 is 2, u3 is 3, u4 is 4. So what would the next uh, value be? So we have 1 plus 2, we have 1 plus 3, 1 plus 4, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4, and 3 plus 4 is all possible sums to consider. So this is going to be 3, 4, 5. 5, 6, 7. So all of our numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, are out. So I'm just going to cross out 3 and 4. Alright, so 5 seems to be the next least integer that is greater than these, right? But notice that 1 plus 4 and 2 plus 3 both generate the same exact value of 5. So by that restriction, 5 cannot be a Ulam number. Therefore, the next least value is going to be 6, so that means u5 is going to be equal to 6. Alright, so let's try and generate a table, um, since we're going to be pretty much doing the same exact thing in repetition. So we have 1, 2, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Let's generate a little table here. Alright, so remember these two Ulam numbers have to be distinct, so I do not need to consider uh, anything along the diagonal 
and symmetries do not count as new things, therefore I will not consider everything below the diagonal either, right? And that's going to continue for all the Ulam numbers, right? So 2 plus 1 is going to be 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, then that's going to be 4 plus 1 is 5, 6, 7, and then 6 plus 1 is going to be 7, 8, 9, and 10, right? So we're trying to generate the next Ulam number, U6. Alright, so 6 is the greatest Ulam number so far generated. So 3, 4, 5, and 6 are out. Uh, notice that 7 has been repeated, um, therefore we cannot consider it. Uh, 8 only appears once, therefore what? So that means U8, or U6, is going to be equal to 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include 8 in this table. Right. So again, I don't need to include those values. So in general, I don't even have to include um, this last row until the next iteration, right? Alright, so 8 plus 1 is going to be 9, 8 plus 2 is 10, 8 plus 3 is 11, 8 plus 4 is 12, and 8 plus 6 is going to be 14. Alright, so let's cancel out any repetitious factors. So we have 9, 8 is already an Ulam number by definition, 10 is repeating, and 11 is the next non-repetitious factor, right? So u7 is going to be equal to 11. And let's just add another column here, so 11. Right? So I can include the next row if I want to, but I know all those are going to be out, right? So what do we have here? So I have 11 plus 1 is going to be 12. 13, 14, 15, 17, and 19. So 11 has already been used. That's an Ulam number by definition. 12 isn't going to work. 14 isn't going to work. Um, and what else do we have? So 13 is the next number that hasn't been used. So U8 is going to be equal to 13. So the only factors that have not been canceled are uh, these values here, 15, 17, 19, in the column of 11. So those are the, that's the only column that I really need to consider here, right? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 13. And then I have the column of 11 and 13 to consider. So 11 and 13. So let's see if I can get the next number out. So take a moment uh, to see if you can figure out what the next uh, Ulam number will be. Alright, so I've gone ahead and filled out uh, this little chart here. So we've already defined 13 as the next Ulam number in sequence, in particular U8. So U8 was equal to 13. So, of course, we've crossed out all the ones that are less than or equal to 13, and we need to cancel out all repetitious uh, factors. So we have 15 in repetition, and what else do we have here? So 14 uh, was repetitious uh, in the previous. Actually, 14 is right there. We can cancel that out. And let's see, what about 16? Ah, so 16 seems to be the next least number. So U9 is going to be equal to 16, right? So, of course, 17 can't be a Ulam number because that repeats. Uh, 19 cannot be a Ulam number since that repeats. Uh, so you should be able to figure out... Um, so 17 and 19 are all crossed out, and this column of 13 does not have 18 in it. 
um, but the next column will have 18 uh, because you can have that from 16 plus 2 and that's the only way since it's increasing from top to bottom. Uh, so one can verify that u10 is going to be equal to 18. So as an exercise you can perform uh, the same pretty much sieve approach to get a u11 is equal to 26 and u12 is equal to 28 and continue this process as long as you want. So here uh, is a question for you. Uh, is there a closed form for the Ulam numbers? So when we say closed form, what do we mean? So we say that un is equal to uh, some function of n, right? Uh, so you may have like uh, n squared minus cosine of n um, plus e to the n, like the greatest integer less than or equal to x, uh, that all divided by n, uh, like the floor of that or something like that, right? I mean, of course, this formula is just made up. I, this formula has no meaning, at least not to me. But the question is, what is the closed form for the Ulam numbers? So we're not going to get into this discussion now, but in case you want to sort of uh, explore uh, this problem, I definitely invite you to do that. Um, I definitely recommend looking at the distribution and see if you can find any patterns or gaps or any curvature uh, to that graph. And then you might be able to at least uh, conjecture some distribution for that. Anyway, this is just another special type of number known as the Ulam numbers. Hope you enjoyed.